Jesus. Gabriel visits Mary in Luke 1, 26 through 38. Tells us the story of the angel Gabriel's visit to Mary. This must have been quite unnerving for Mary. You can imagine. <laughs> Amen. A visit from a heavenly being telling her that she was a virgin. Telling her, who was a virgin, that she had been chosen to give birth to the Savior of the world. Mary was initially frightened until Gabriel told her that she had found favor with God. Gabriel explained to her that she would conceive a child by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Believers rightly celebrate Jesus' birth, but it was actually a normal birth. If, if being born in a stable can be called normal, that is. However, his conception was a one-time event that was unique in all of history. The angel told Mary a few things about her soon-to-be son. One, he was to be called Jesus. Hallelujah, that's in Luke 131. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. That is in Luke 132. God will give him the throne of David. That is in Luke 133. And he, there will be no end to his kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. That is verse 133. And in Luke 135, Gabriel the angel tells Mary, he will be called holy, the son of God, the son of spirit. Gabriel assured Mary these things would surely take place because nothing will be impossible with God. Amen. Yeah. How many of us get to fill that on a daily basis? Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah, Lord. And then the angel visited Joseph in the dream. At that time, at this time, Joseph and Mary were engaged, were engaged to be married. In their culture, when a man and woman were engaged, it was very much as if they were married, only without sexual relations. When Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, imagine that, you know, he decided that he should divorce her without any publicity. Joseph was probably very confused about the situation. He believed he was marrying a virgin, and now he discovers that she is pregnant. People would think that Mary had been unfaithful to her spouse already. Still, Joseph could have made a public spectacle of Mary, disgraced her publicly in order to preserve his pride. However, apparently Joseph was a better man and decided to divorce Mary quietly. However, God had other plans for Joseph. In Matthew 1, 18 through 25, an angel appeared to Joseph, a dream, reassuring him that Mary's pregnancy was a gift from God, and that Joseph should not be afraid to take Mary as his wife. Once again, the angel included in its message that the baby's name was to be Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Amen. The name Jesus is the Greek form of a Hebrew word meaning Jehovah. God will save. Even the name God gave Jesus testified to his mission in life. Believing the word from God, Joseph took Mary as his wife. The birth of Jesus took place in Bethlehem in Luke 2, 1 through 7. Caesar Augustus called for a census to be taken of all those dwelling in his realm. Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth, but were required by the Roman government to make a trip to Bethlehem in order to register in the census. We just had a census. Amen. They had to travel back then to register for it. The census was taken in order to assess the population for tax purposes. Thus, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, even though his parents' home was in Nazareth. This fulfilled the prophecy of his birth found in Micah 5.2. Since this was the time of the Kent census, the city of Bethlehem would be bringing with, brimming with out-of-towners. For whatever reason, Joseph and Mary could find no suitable accommodations. Then the time came for Jesus to be born. Apparently, Joseph and Mary searched for some place that she could deliver a baby in relative privacy. 
Most believe that that place was a stable, because the Bible says the baby Jesus was placed in a manger, which is a feeding trough for animals, at his birth. Hallelujah, Jesus. They had traveled roughly 70 miles from their hometown in order to participate in this census. However, that was just what was taking place on the outside. Their spirits must have been soaring, knowing what the angels had told them. Amen. Could you imagine? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Knowing the time was near for Mary to give birth to God's son knowing that they had been chosen to participate in this incredible plan of God's to save mankind from sin. Hallelujah, Jesus. We should feel that same blessing that God is using us. Amen. The hardships of the journey and their lack of better accommodations could hardly have made, you know, we were just complaining about how cold it was in here. Think about that. Okay, certain a few others were complaining about how cold it was. There. Amen. And I don't even like cold, so <laughs> Amen. My my I, my bones don't like cold. I ain't got enough meat, so. But they were going through this, you know. Baby Jesus was laid in a a, a feeding trough, you know. We call it a manger. This was God coming into the world in human experience in in, in human flesh. I cannot help picture the entire event as something blessed by God in a way that is unique to that particular time and place. What an incredible story, story, truly the greatest story ever told. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Christmas story of Jesus' birth has always been special to me. The warmth I feel in my heart as Christmas time is more than the hot chocolate or the Christmas tree lights at night or any of the other fond memories I have of the holiday season. And I cherish many with my family and my friends, as many as you probably do. It feels like God spreads his love on humanity a little thicker during the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. It is as if he is reminding us that the gift of his son that he gave us so many years ago should convince us of his love for us. A love that we should all seek to emulate and share with others. Christmas should be a celebration of the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that this Christmas season, season, Christians will lovingly and prayerfully take the lead in turning the holidays back into a time of reflection on and worship of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. God be with us. As we continue the rest of this service, I've got, Jacob's got to actually, he's going to come up and sing a few more songs, and then that's about all I got, unless somebody would like to add something, because I, I have no problem with anybody jumping in at any time, adding anything. This is God's house. Amen. This is God's plan. This is God's will. And, uh, yes. amen, I thank God for his, you know, if he hadn't been burned, I wouldn't be standing here. If he hadn't been born, I would not be standing here. Many, I mean, many of us wouldn't. Yeah, he'd be in, we'd be in trouble. And we'd be in different trouble. Uh -huh. Cancer would have eaten my bones, and I would have been thrown in a box and thrown six feet in the ground. We'd be having blood sacrifices still. Amen. Amen. Our blood sacrifices and still. We'd be in jail. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, you can only imagine that God definitely slowed down the coming sins of the world, and we see them. They're right there. They're all there now. Satan has definitely piled them on layer after layer, you know. Um, when I was growing up, you know, you didn't even hear about, you know, homosexuality and things like that that much. There wasn't that many gay people around. In the closet. Now everybody's either gay or they're transgender. And I'm not here to, to, to knock on that or, or to preach against it right now. The Bible still clearly tells you where, it, where what it is. <laughs> I don't have to preach on it. God already told us. But... But I can't imagine my grandson, who's not even a year old yet, is going to grow up in a world where we even hardly don't even say, God, we trust anymore. He's not going to, you know, um, unless I can get him pulled in, he's not going to be raised in a church. You know, and they're not going to teach him at school. They're going to be teaching him to be a transgender. 
-huh. Like this is the education he's going to get. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for for you know for the birth of of, of the human that Jesus you know that we carry with us. Um, and uh, yeah, take him out to the world with us every day. Don't let nothing stop you from coming to church. Don't let nothing stop you from opening the Bible. Don't let nothing stop you from praising and worshiping. I don't care. There's times I'm a skinny little, I look like a toothpick dancing, guys. Come on, you know. But I'm still up here and I'll still do it. Because it's for him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Next Sunday, 6 p.m. No Thursday service, don't forget, because that's Christmas Eve. Night today, the 25th. Be sure you wake up and tell Jesus happy birthday. And then, Brother Jacob, you got some songs. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, now. 
Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Well, we talked about the candy cane. We talked about the, uh, what? Just because the commercial came up. No. Um, we talked about this was the night before Jesus came back. We talked about the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. I want to talk about one more thing here. The Christmas tree. God's Christmas tree. Some people, when a Christmas tree they see, may only think that it's just a tree with shiny lights and a star so bright and pretty colors that gleam in the night. But to me, it's so much more than lights and stars and ornaments galore. For when a Christmas tree I see, this is what it means to me. At the top is a star shining so bright like the one that shone that first Christmas night, or an angel like those who to the shepherds did sing, glory to God for the newborn king. The tree made of wood with its branches spread wide is like the cross upon which our Savior died. Its collar evergreen means life everlasting, which can be yours if you will just ask him. Amen. Its lights shining so pretty and bright are like the light of the world, God's Son, Jesus Christ. Like pieces of tinsel, too many to count, are God's unending mercies. They freely abound. The ornaments are a bright crimson red, like great drops of blood that for you he shed. Garland, gracefully wrapped, around the tree is like God's grace which wraps around you and me. The gifts under the tree are as nice as can be, but the greatest gift ever is Jesus, you see. For he came to this earth to die on a tree so you and I from sin might be free. So give him your heart and happy you will be that his gift of life has made you free. How pretty are these wonderful trees, but none are as beautiful as God's Christmas tree. Hallelujah, Jesus. Merry Christmas to everyone. We do have some gifts. I believe Tony and Kathy have some gifts to give out to everybody. The basket here is gifts from Jennifer and Eric. Since they couldn't be here, keep them in prayer. We have a card uh, with a with a with a candy cane. Since we did the story of the candy cane with you, if anybody really likes peppermint candy canes, but I don't know. I I I, I guess I could have gotten flavored, you know. But Amen. But um, you know, we come here to serve God. I think we did that. I think we praised Him. We worshipped Him. Um, you know, if you come here for a show, you probably didn't like the service. You know, if you like the routine, That's you it. probably didn't like our service. And uh, I'm okay with that because I delivered tonight what God wanted me to deliver. So thank you guys. Thank you, Jesus, for all that are here. Bless each and every one of you. And uh, we'll do the gifts as soon as we're done. Brother uh, Perry, you want to pray us out? Lord Jesus, thank you for the message. Thank you for the service. Protect us as we leave. You can draw us back here safely next week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we stay a little longer, but it's kind of cold. I know everybody's cold, so I didn't want to stretch it out too long. So, yeah. Amazing. I love Pentatonix. I want to go to one of the concerts. Oh, we're going to do nice